I have for you is a word. Tenet. It'll open the right doors. Some of the wrong ones, too. Use it carefully. Kenneth Branagh, it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. Um, I do say that to everybody, but I mean it this time. Uh, a bit of big Thank fan. you very much. Um, congratulations on making it to the release of Tenet, finally. Um, you're still in one piece. There's no nice way to say this, but you're a real nasty prick in this film, aren't you? <laughs> uh, when I went for my first costume fitting, uh, Christopher Nolan walked back from the set with me and he said, and he took five minutes to do it. Not, not usual for him. Uh, and, and I wonder why he was accompanying me all this way. He said, I just need you to know that this fella is unremittingly bad. He said, don't look for anything good. Don't try and redeem him. Don't find the softer side. There isn't one. Um, and I need you to know that. And on and the final day when they wrapped me, he said, oh, by the way, you've got the memo. You've got the memo about the character. No higher compliment. Well, you do get to deliver what I consider is going to go on to be one of the greatest death threats in movie history um, involving somebody's neck and maybe some male genitalia. What was, was that one of your own lines? Does that come from reality? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that definitely, uh, I wouldn't dare try and improvise in a Christopher Nolan film. And no, that particular exotic means of punishment definitely comes from Christopher Nolan himself. I was wondering, uh, John David delivers uh, a brilliant version of the word, whoa, which Keanu Reeves would be proud <laughs> of. Um, I put everything into it there, and I don't know if you could tell, but I was wondering... It's seamless. I, I appreciate your pity. Um, I was wondering if whenever you were making it or reading it or even just filming it or seeing it, um, was there a particular whoa moment for you? Uh, I'm not sure if you've had a chance to even see it and kind of take it all in yet, but uh, yeah, that whoa moment for you. Um, uh, I walked out of a door. I'd been arrived at this location. It was very early, it was dark. They took me into this place. Uh, I was a bit sort of woozy with it all. The flight had been delayed and everything. And uh, later that morning, I opened the door to the bottom of this building and there was a Malfi, 5,000 people. Uh, in front of me was Christopher Nolan. There was a massive yacht. There were like three camera crews. There was a launch, Elizabeth Debicki looking like the most ravishing creature that ever been created. John David Washington looking as cool as the coolest thing that ever been seen on screen. Uh, and they said, uh, Ken, are you ready? We're taking you to your yacht. Um, that was, that was, I would say, a whoa moment. Most definitely. And now that uh, the release is here, the NDAs are done, the secrets are over, whenever friends and family come up to you, and I don't know what they call you, Ken, Kenny, K. Brown, I'm not sure what it is, but when people finally ask you, <laughs> what is the movie Tenet about? What are you now able to say to them? I say it's about two and a half hours. You see, I told you you were a nasty prick. <laughs> 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 it's an no. exhilarating, exhilarating blockbuster from Christopher Nolan. He's written it like a personal film. It comes out like a massive train of a movie, exhilarating, blow your brains out, blow your mind out, and uh, a great way to get back to the escapism of the movies. Well, hopefully we'll see you, Killian Murphy, and Barry Keoghan in a Christopher Nolan movie in Ireland very soon. Done. Sold. I'm on. Are you writing it? Uh, I'm going to do a woe at some point anyway. Okay, perfect. You're on. Okay. Good to sure. talk to you, Ed. Cheers, Kevin. Thank you. Bye-bye. How would you like to die? Old. You chose the wrong profession. What the hell happened here? Hasn't happened yet. There are people in the future who need us. I need a tenant. We need to save them here and now. This reversing the flow of time doesn't us being here now mean it never happened.